This is weird. I'm going to try to go out and come back in because all I can hear is Carrie. Okay. It's all, all you really need to hear, but <laughs> yeah, you might want to fix it. Today's podcast was very fun, and we hope you join us next time to ask questions and be a part of it on YouTube Live. We had 50 viewers at one point, so thanks everyone that tuned in. This week is Kentucky Bourbon Festival, and we're getting more folks lined up to be on the show. It also means a huge dent in our credit card for hot new bourbon releases hitting the market. But as always, remember to support the show on Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash bourbon pursuit. Samples and koozies have been shipped out, and we'll do a giveaway next week since this week has been so crazy. As I'd mentioned, this was a fun time on YouTube Live, so I'll throw in one more blooper before we start the show. I think there is a bourbon boner out there. I swear I've seen that. I've seen the game before, before too. There is now. Yeah, because uh, I told my buddy that was the reason for just the R, and he screenshotted me that guy's Instagram, or I think he commented or something that said, is this the real bourbon boner? Should I tell him that? <laughs> From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky. And you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to noseyourbourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single-barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, Find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. Play Whiskey Wednesday Round 11, The Memory Game. Until June 26, each week you can win one of our 12 incredible grand prizes. Select two doors at checkout. And if they match on drawing night, you'll win that bottle. Not a match? No worries. You still score a Weller 12-year. Every $5 ticket gives you five chances to win, including four weekly bonus prizes. Get your tickets now at give270.org. Charitable gaming license ORG 0002703. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or thebourbonconcierge.com and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Welcome back to the episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast. Kenny here tonight. Ryan can't make it, but I am joined by a group of fellas here, and this is actually a really awesome thing that we're doing here. So this is the first ever Bourbon Community Roundtable. It was an idea I had just because I uh, wanted to be able to get a lot of people together to kind of like share and bounce ideas off each other. But at the same exact time, I've had uh, a lot of other people say like, you know, we can be guests on the show. Like I can just come in and talk about what's bourbon like in Iowa and stuff like that. And I, and not to say that's not a bad idea, but I figured, well, let's try to give a lot of people a voice. And so this is actually being broadcasted on YouTube live right now. We are creeping up to about 30 viewers and it's a way that we are going to be able to do this live, ask questions to the audience and be able to get their answers uh, while we're discussing it. But 
before I ramble on anymore, I want my guests to come on and kind of talk about themselves a little bit. So I'll pass it to uh, the person that's on my far right here, uh, Nick from Breaking Bourbon. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick from BreakingBourbon.com. I am one of three uh, creators and, and writers. Uh, the other two guys, Jordan and Eric, are um, uh, hopefully going to be rotating through these uh, these podcasts as we hopefully do these in the future. Uh, you can find us at uh, BreakingBourbon.com, release calendar and articles and uh, reviews and all that good stuff. So thank you for having us. Carrie, you're up. Hey everyone, I'm Kerry. I run uh, suburbia.com, S U B O U R B I A. <laughs> On Twitter, I'm at Bourbon Gamer, Bourbon underscore Gamer. Um, probably the newer member of the blog group here and this podcast, but um, been trying to write about everything and talk about everything. So glad to join you on the second one here. Great. And we're going to wrap it up here with Blake. I'm Blake. I run bourboner.com, bourbon with an R on the end. Um, a lot of reviews, a lot of limited edition talk. You may have seen the Pappy release maps. That's kind of what got Bourboner kicked off. So, um, yeah, that's it. And then you've got your own Facebook group. Like you got this massive following. Yeah. You're, you're trying to get every social media. So you can't, you can't escape Bourboner in the bourbon social media world. He's kind of a, he's kind of a big deal. (laughs) He really is. (laughs) That that kind of brings us into our first topic, and we were kind of chatting about this before we actually started the recording. But uh, and I want to pose this as a question to our viewers as well, and feel free to type your answers. But what is the best way to kind of consume a lot of the information that is coming in regards of of information for bourbon? And because all of us right here sitting on this panel or whatever you want to call us right now, this round table, we have multiple ways that we try to connect with the people that follow us, right? Whether it's uh, doing this right now, like a, a YouTube live broadcast. So people are actually being a part of something. It could be uh, just Twitter through actual personal engagement. Uh, Blake runs a massive Facebook group that's got hundreds and hundreds of people in it and allows people to share and you know push information out there. Uh, you guys all run blogs. And then, of course, there's always Instagram. So, uh, Nick, I'll kind of ask you, uh, you know, where do you think you have the most uh, kind of like followers that are that are kind of tracking and getting the most information from you? Um, you know, it kind of break it down, you know, the three areas that we're on are Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And they're very, very different communities on each of those. Um, Instagram, definitely the fastest growing. Um, it, you know, it's very easy to put something out there and reach a lot of people, uh, especially with the stories they have now. Those typically get in the thousands of views, even though they're up for 24 hours. Um but then over on Twitter, I think you have a different conversation going on than you do on Instagram. You know, I, I find that on Twitter, you're going to find people in the industry, a little more obviously in the industry, who are more involved. You know, some of the distillers are over there. You know, a lot of people with, you know, with the blogs and the writers, they're easier to communicate with, I think, um, you know, that you don't always have on Instagram. And then finally, on Facebook, you know, the the tricky part about Facebook is unless it, you know, when, when you post something, at least when we post it to our Breaking Bourbon page, if it doesn't get shared and liked, uh, you know, very rapidly, you know, with the first few times it's seated out there that it kind of gets killed by Facebook. They they want to see you pay money to get the message out there. But, you know, some things like the release calendar, for example, we'll see that get shared, you know, quite a bit over on, on Facebook. And do you think, and I'll pose this over to you, Carrie, um, do you think it's like organically like sharing something on Facebook uh, gets a lot more views than something that you just share on Twitter. Uh, because I know we all have our own Facebook pages and, uh, unless people are following us, uh, that's the only way that they can actually get that information unless we pay Facebook to, to boost that information. Yeah. I don't, I actually, it's hard to tell. I don't think that for my, for suburbia itself, I don't think Facebook is our main communication platform. I still, I was born and raised on Twitter when I started doing all of this and, a little bit on Reddit, a um, little bit on Facebook, but really um, Twitter was my main platform. And But nowadays it seems like the, the distilleries are not as active on Twitter as they were when I started. Um, and you find them a lot more on Facebook. So, you know, I guess Facebook kind of um, branches out to not just the bourbon fans, but, you know, friends of mine or other people in the area that are interested who may not be on Twitter. 
Whereas Twitter, I think nowadays the people who are still around are, are some pretty hardcore bourbon fans that um, started a while ago and are still on Twitter. So I think it's kind of a mixed, it's, it's kind of a mixed platform. And then there's people who have a lot of success on Instagram that I'm not even really that, that big on. Um, I know a buddy of mine who I'll have to find his name on here, but he just started maybe six months ago and he's got, you know, over 10,000 followers on Instagram, you know, posting bourbon pictures. So wow, that's pretty I, crazy. Yeah. So uh, I'll, that's actually one community I even forgot about. And Blake, we'll move over here because I know you have a love hate relationship with the folks over at Reddit too, right? Because sometimes <laughs> they'll call you an asshole or an idiot and then uh, sometimes <laughs> they'll give you praise. I think I get that. Uh, with just about any social media <laughs> outlet, um, you know, and it's a different crowd. I think just with, you know, Instagram and that kind of stuff, people are just looking for post bottles. Uh, Reddit, you definitely dig a lot deeper. And that's kind of a community. I think I've been in there for like four years now, maybe a little under that. Um, but there's a lot of like in-depth discussion. So you can get a lot of great information out of there. Um, and it's not just, Hey, I'm going to throw up a bottle of what I bought today or, Hey, look at this fine. Um, so it's all what you want to, what you're trying to do. I still read Reddit every day and I still look at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook every day as well. Um, but they all kind of have their own little crowds that follow them and their own kind of niches for bourbon information that goes in each of them. So it's fun to kind of get into each of them and, um, you know, you meet a lot of cool people in the in the bourbon world, and you never know um, where some. You know, I've met a lot of people through Reddit that I've uh, you know met for tastings, or they've helped me find a bottle and stuff. Um, which seems like there's less and less of that that day, but try to at least get my foot in every uh, bourbon arena there is right now. So. So another question I'll pose to you, Blake, because anybody that's been around bourbon for a while is knows about Facebook and everything that happens within the groups that we don't talk about. But you started your own group that is a completely like wide open thing. Uh, but you also have like your own like forum community. So what was the idea of having kind of like two different communities and, and why have you kind of switched over to the Facebook route? Yeah, it just seems like people talk more on Facebook. I don't know if it's just because they're opening it up all the time anyway to, you know, see what their cousin's ski trip look like or whatever it is, but they're going to be in Facebook. And so just a lot more people, I, I really tried to push a forum on the Bourboner site for a long time and it just never seemed to get any real traction. Um, and then I opened up a Facebook group and like 1500 people joined in a month and, you know, they're always posting pictures and talking and that kind of stuff. So it just seems like a much more organic way for a conversation to happen um, within the Facebook platform. Uh, it, you know, and Facebook's holdback is if you're trying to buy, sell, trade, there, you may get shut down, which we kind of limit that. So um, right. I think, I think if I had to guess, I think bourboner is going to be the, it's called the gateway drug of the Facebook bourbon empire. <laughs> he reported it seven times and it's yeah, still yeah. there. <laughs> so, I'm trying to get it shut they down. Come, they said, Hey, Carrie again, he just reported another post. It just, keeps <laughs> report, it just won't get down. But I, th I agree with you. I think that Facebook and Reddit are the places to go if you want to have a long detailed discussion about stuff. And Twitter and Instagram are the places where you don't want to have a long talk. You just want to show you know, something that you bought that day, or you want to talk about, you know, maybe something you tried and you want to review it in less than 165 characters. And, yeah. you know, other people kind of hop on there. I think it's more of it's the, each has its own place when you're it comes limited, to social media. Yeah. You're limited when it comes to Twitter. If you want to get into an in-depth discussion and that kind of stuff, because the characters, especially if you want multiple people in on the conversation, and then same with Instagram, you know, how much conversation can really happen in a comment of a picture. Um, Reddit and Facebook seem to be the best place for that to get a lot more just, hey, you know, when's it coming out? You get a lot more detailed of how a distillery works and, you know, what makes Buffalo Trace different from Old Forester. And, yeah, and there's or, places yeah. for both of it. There's, mm -hmm. there's places where it's necessary to dive into stuff. And then I think Twitter fits for me, a lot of the stuff that I talk about 
can talk about pretty quickly on it. So mm-hmm. Twitter's a, a good platform for it. But you know, Facebook's also a huge arena as well. Yeah, like I, I think I'm almost long winded, so I need a, a, a more than 140 characters to <laughs> put <laughs> answers out there. Yeah. yeah, I'd almost argue that on Twitter, you know, I think you have a lot of people that are that are watching as well and not participating per se. Whereas in Facebook and, and Reddit, folks that participate uh, participate a lot, you know, and aren't necessarily afraid to or not afraid to, but they, you know, they share their opinions and so forth on those platforms. I think the one thing that I really like about the Instagram platform and sharing bourbon uh, is that it. And I was really surprised by this because sometimes, you know, we'd be drinking a bottle of bourbon or whatever it is, and we'd share it under and you might get one or two replies like awesome bottle. Like I can't find that. Uh, and then maybe a like or six or whatever, but you post it on Instagram and then all of a sudden you've got like seven comments and uh, 160 likes. And I, I found it really amazing that that's a much more engaging platform. I guess there's, and that's all, this is the one thing that really uh, strikes me that is really surprising is that when I post a picture on uh, Instagram, it's literally like within 30 seconds, I get my first like. And I, I thought that was really impressive that people are like that in tuned with Instagram, that they're constantly sitting there checking it, or maybe it's just the right time or whatever it is. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll kind of move into a next topic. Uh, I'm gonna somebody so a bourbon fanboy just said you go to Instagram for the best bourbon porn. So that's, that's it. <laughs> Very true. That, that makes true. sense. Uh, yeah, because there's definitely some rare bourbon people that are on there, and they have great stories behind it. So it's it's actually pretty awesome. Uh, and then Chris actually just asked a question. They said, "How much traffic uh, comes from social versus people just coming to your homepage?" That's and, a good question. And I'll I'll go ahead and kind of take this one a little bit because um, you know at least for us you know just having a podcast um, you know a lot of the things that we do we are actually just pushing it on Twitter and Facebook, but nobody's really listening to it on the homepage. It's kind of like their their initial. Um, I guess you could say like piece of crack, right? Until they get addicted to the show and then they sign up for iTunes and then that's just their mechanism of how they continue to consume the show. Um, so I'll, I'll post the question to, to you guys. Um, what do you guys think about that? Uh, when we started out, you know, you, you, about two years ago, a little over two years ago, um, no one knew who we were. And, you know, so you start posting links and so forth on social media just because it's kind of the only place you have, you know, the stuff is there but no one's finding it yet um, by Google search or and no one's got a bookmark or anything. And I think it's the introduction, you know, for a lot of people, you know, it's somehow introduced to it through it being shared, you know, to them either by following directly or shared by a friend or then, you know, shared by somebody else, maybe even on social media. And then that has kind of transitioned into, you know, most folks, at least for Breaking Bourbon, coming in organically and directly at this point. I would say a majority of the traffic that I get just comes from wherever I post it. Um, so I'll, I'll send it. Usually when I post a new blog article, it'll copy to Twitter and to Facebook. And I think the Facebook is starting to grow more than Twitter has. You know, I've been on Twitter for two years now and um, the rate of followers, you definitely kind of see that that starts to slow down. Whereas, you know, when if just in a random day, I'll get five or six people that like my page, Suburbia on Facebook. So I definitely think there's a trend where um, people are moving over or moving away from Twitter, but there's still a hardcore Twitter base too that um, is still around. We all can't be Blake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I looked. It was actually lower than I thought it was going to be. It, it's only about 7% comes from social media. But I think a lot of that is my biggest thing is email subscribers. Um, so I think if you you know click on the link in the email, you're not going to go then and click on it from Twitter or Facebook, wherever. Because um, I usually send the email out and then an hour or two later post it to social media. Um, but definitely start, I mean, kind of back to the Reddit point, that was where I started posting anything. I, I don't even think I posted to Twitter initially. I just posted in Reddit cause that was where I was. Um, so social media is, it, it's a big part of it. Like keeping the discussion going as well. I think that's a big thing. You know, you post an article and then people start, start talking about it and, I think it's just a great way to keep the discussion going about whatever you're posting about. 
Yeah. And just a word of advice to any other bloggers out there. And uh, I mean, either of these bloggers have, have taken kind of a, a key to this of, of how you get continual traffic is to make those articles that are going to keep people coming. Uh, I mean, every single year when I know Pappy release season's coming, I'm going to have to go and check Blake's site to figure out which week it was the past prior two years um, or it's a Weller from Blake's site, right? So some of those articles are the ones that you just have continual traffic and you have to have those kind of articles to, to keep people engaged. But let's let's go ahead and move on to the next topic and I'll yeah. put this out to the okay. put this out to the uh, our viewers out there. What's the most random trade that you've seen of all time? And I'll, I'll kind of go first because I saw this happening on one of the forums probably – Oh, I don't know when Pokemon Go just started because they were trying to trade Pokemon cards for bourbon. And, I, and it was so funny because I, I remember commenting and being like, because uh, he actually was trading. He wanted to get Pokemon cards for his, his son. Uh, and he was like, well, I'll just trade bourbon and try to get these rare ones that you know people have been hoarding for the past 10 years. And I remember I said, well, if, if your son ever gets into pogs, let me know. I've got a collection somewhere. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, you know, I'll throw it out to you guys and feel free to speak up whoever wants. You know, what's the what's the craziest trade you think you, you've ever seen? I saw a car. It was a 67 Chevy, I think. Somebody okay. wanted yeah. to trade for 35,000 <laughs> worth of bourbon. And he was serious. I know the guy. He's He actually lives in Atlanta. I'm um, really serious, but I think if somebody had thrown out um, some big time bottles towards him, like he kept saying, you know, multiples of A.H. E. Hirsch and Pappy 23 and this and that. And yeah, he wanted to sell a trade a car for bourbon. I can imagine going down to the DMV and filling out the paperwork. For that. Do you put a value on it at that point, or you know, do you have to pay sales tax? Or? I'm to be paying with PayPal today. Yeah. <laughs> if you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon, and that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus Magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon, the farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point of sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. So somebody just said that they traded bourbon for IT services and web design, uh, which isn't bad, right? I, uh, say, because- I traded bourbon for tax services, so I, I was like, like, I mean, I could do your tax return for, for you, or you could just give me a bottle if you don't. <laughs> I actually, this year, I traded my landscaper. I took a, a you know, instead of having to pay him the full amount, uh, we traded part of his labor for bourbon, right? So yeah. it was a way that I got rid of some old Rip Van Winkles and uh, some some other things like Barrel Proof uh, E.H. Taylor and some other things that he really wanted. So I was like, yeah, sure, we can do that. It's its own currency at this point. I mean, why, why not, you know? And for the guy who's trading the bourbon, it may be a great deal because you may have just traded something you spent $100 and you're now getting like a $400 credit on your lawn service. So. Mm-hmm. This, this happened locally here. Well, it didn't happen, but it was off. Offered, but at a local retailer who we know, a customer 
offered sex in return for bourbon. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was like, hope that wasn't on like Craigslist or Backpage or something like that. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said he didn't take the offer, but the bottle did go missing a week later. So. <laughs> I'm looking for a bourbon called Old Blow, Old Blowhard. Old Blowhard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else said that they also uh, traded lacrosse gear uh, for bourbon. They actually, oh, sorry, they sell it on Reddit that somebody traded lacrosse gear for bourbon. So, uh, yeah, Reddit I mean, does the weird stuff. They, they do a lot of weird trades. They encourage it, actually. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's 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 worth it, right? I mean, if you have something of value, and as Blake said, if you have something that you bought for a hundred dollars that's now worth four hundred dollars, yeah, you're getting basically three hundred dollars of stuff for free. Yeah. So it, it's definitely a, a good so way to all, look at it. It's all a commodity, right? It's a trading commodity for a lot of people. So yeah, it's sure. got a value behind it. The value is not concrete. I mean, it's it's not like a commodity like gold or something, but um, that's probably more valuable than gold right now to some people. Yeah, I was gonna say per ounce, are we higher on <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> possibly. But it, you know, it's it's a it's a trading commodity. It's an investment for some people. And I, you know, we hate that it is because as you can see by this tower behind me, bourbon is and whiskey is meant for drinking, but for some people, it's just a long-term investment. Yeah, it, well, for, for a lot of people, that's kind of what it's turned into, right? Is a, a rush to get these things and then mm-hmm. kind of just sit on them, yeah. uh, which, you know, sucks to a point, but it has real in that market for, for hours. So I don't want to dive into that. Um, somebody said if trading for childcare, wait until after the services are rendered. <laughs> <laughs> and then another person, uh, whiskey Zila just said, I pay my friends in beer and whiskey for helping with home improvement projects on the regular, which. Oh yeah. Who doesn't though? Yeah. yeah you come over and help me with this. Help me put in this light bulb. I got a six pack. We can split. <laughs> yeah, that's Carrie, Carrie, if you need help changing a light bulb, you, 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 you <laughs> quick collect a bourbon. If anyone's in Atlanta, Carrie's got a light bulb to change. Yeah, I've got a couple actually <laughs> down here. That's why it's kind of dark. Just, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, we'll kind of kick it off into one of the last topics uh, that we want to touch into before we maybe hit on a, a question here, if we've got enough time. And that's Antique Collection. It's been announced. Press release came out. All three of you had something to say about it. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, all of us, we're on some uh, private chat on Twitter. And we're always going back and forth. And then these guys are spilling out math equations like back and forth to one another. And I'm just, I'm, I'm like, guys, go figure it out on somebody else's thread because uh, how many bottles are in the barrel is, is interesting. But man, you guys are going some crazy math. So uh, Nick, I'll, I'll push it over to you because I think you might have been the first one to, to kind of release the bottle count. So kind of kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So the, you know, what's interesting about the bottle count this year in, in, in overall, it's up, it's up about 30, a little over 30% by comparison with last year. Everything is up except for Sazerac 18, which quite possibly might be the one that everyone was kind of wishing would be up. Um, being the first new batch, um, I'm sure everybody wants to try it. You know, one thing that's being talked about right now is people's guesses as to how much this year's Sazerac 18 is going to be going for on the the secondary market. Uh, um, you know, but it, kind of thinking about trying to find. Buffalo Trace Antique Collection over the past three or four years, it's really been much more difficult. In fact, maybe Pappy's been easier to find, but Buffalo Trace Antique Collection really is out there. People know about it. Um, you know, people that maybe aren't even that interested, they just know it's something of value. So they're getting on the list, they're going after it. You know, of course, that causes, you know, us all to kind of get stressed about it and so forth, you know, because you want to get it, you want to open it, you want to drink it, you know, but, uh, it, Part of that, and maybe an unpopular opinion, something I've kind of thought about, um, is this this idea of the crazy popularity of of brands like this, and what that does for the community as a whole, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. And and part of me actually thinks it's it's been a good thing. It gets a lot of people involved, interested, and excited about you know about bourbon. Maybe pulls them in, you know, and then once they're in, they realize there's plenty of other good bourbons out there, you know, besides ones like antique collection, you know, for example, but, um, I think it's one of those, those bourbons that, uh, or one of those, uh, you know, groups of, of whiskey that, you know, people kind of maybe hear about first and, and, and draws them into, you know, to the experience. 
I think before the next person uh, goes, I want to pose a question to the viewers, uh, which is, is there a particular bottle you're really gunning for this year? And then also, what's your favorite bottle of the Antique Collection? And if you haven't ever had the Antique Collection, then welcome to the chase. I uh, Just to interject real quick on the SAS 18, I think of the five bottles, that's the one that um, everybody's most interested in this year, because like he was saying, um, this is the first year since 2003, I think, that, that it's brand new product because they had it tanked for a long time. Um, so I think a lot of people are also interested to find out how it is. I actually will know tomorrow um, how it is. I'm going to get a sample of it and try it, put up a review. But And also there's only 2,500 bottles. So it's a very, very, very small release compared to William LaRue Weller, I think, which is the largest this year, right? I think it's at mm -hmm. 13,000 bottles, which is... It's pretty high for for that. Um, yeah, should that's be the first time it's been that high up. Yeah, yeah, so it should should be obtainable, and um, yeah, so hopefully it'll be it'll be interesting to see, and hopefully people who um, you know have built relationships with stores will at least be able to land one of those bottles with a higher count this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm watching the the comments flow through. It looks like this is the this is the key question to ask because I see people saying uh, stag hands down, and then somebody said Eagle Rare 17 has been my unicorn, and uh, a lot of people are saying Saz would be great, but it's just not going to happen for the majority of people. Uh, so Blake, I'll kind of kick it over to you. Kind of talk about um, you know you're going to have the release map again, right? Yes, yeah. So that'll probably go out. Hopefully this week, um, I just got to get a couple other things. I was trying to do a big giveaway around it, but I'm not sure if that's going to work out. But uh, yeah, still going to do the release map. Um, that's always a fun one. To it, it, The point of it is to help people find it. And obviously, I know not everybody is going to find a bottle, but um, th that seems to get a little more pushback sometimes. But hopefully it helps people find bottles. And like I always say each year with these releases, just because the map is state doesn't mean your area has gotten it. So like for me, I know if Florida gets it, it's going to hit Miami first and a week or so later, Jacksonville is going to get it. So I'm waiting to see when Miami is. So then I really know when I need to start looking at stores and everything and that may be giving away for too much information if anybody else is here. <laughs> yeah. So, so just as a just to interject real quick, everyone in Atlanta, when when Bourbonar reports that Antique is in Georgia, it's two more weeks till it hits Atlanta. So don't even start running well, around the city. Officially, Terry <laughs> gives me a free bottle, and I don't put Georgia up until at least three weeks after he's got his first bottle. It's Big and conspiracy. <laughs> this is the bottle he gets, and he loves it a lot. He loves yeah. his Clodo, there, yeah, right? There you yes. go. <laughs> Which the bottle counts. Funny thing, I was talking to a guy from Buffalo Trace, and I said, you know, looks like the uh, Weller was had a really big bottle count this year. He goes, well, you know, that that we don't release that information. I'm like, okay, but we, you give the barrel amount you give the evaporation numbers it's just simple math i mean right. you know breaking bourbon they did it in like 45 seconds of the press release going out so <laughs> let's not pretend yeah, but they, they have yeah, three that's, guys that's, that's not fair like they, they signed each guy to it i was still trying yeah, to put like, numbers into my no work got done and that day they had yeah, for that yeah, this beautiful design <laughs> thing out ration like, percentage yeah. and the number of barrels but we're not going to tell you how yeah, many bottles yeah. we have we this yeah. gentleman just said he's going to be uh, stalking when it hits Miami. He's he's another Jacksonville guy. So <laughs> now I'm definitely keeping it off. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I got to no. say, though, I would just real quick on the just compared to Antique Collection, I would say there's another um, distillery, another company probably will be talked about just as much this fall as um, Buffalo Trace. I may I won't say any names, but I think there are a lot of products coming out of one company this fall that might give uh, Buffalo Trace a run for their money. Is it um, a twenty-four year old bourbon, or is it? That could be one of theirs. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Among other things. All right. Are we going to talk about that? I mean, I feel like that's kind of an interesting release because. I've seen a little bit of controversy on, you know, some people just saying, oh, who cares? It's just over oaked Elijah Craig 23 a year. But the reviews I've seen so far have been really good. So I don't know. I feel like that could be a polarizing release. 
we'll, well talk got, about it for a minute. Yeah, let's let's kind of touch they've, on. It. They've got a lot of products coming out. I think they've got the. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the the new um, Heaven Hill Select Stock, mm-hmm. which is um, yeah. has a very old barrels in it. They've got their Parker's that Heritage the Ten. One? Yeah, the pre fire barrels. Okay. They've got the Parker's Heritage Ten. I think there's another batch of um, the Heaven Hill the 15 year stuff coming out they um have another elijah craig 21 release this fall another elijah craig 18 release this fall and you're going to start seeing the private barrel elijah craig's hitting stores so they've got a lot of product coming out this fall well they have a lot of product in general yeah so. mm-hmm. yeah but yeah. they're releasing yeah. a lot of stuff that'd be good that's, to see that's what i'm interested to see what the uh phc 10 what the bottle level will be like that this year um you know i, I have one piece t- I have one little uh, insider information that um, they they produced two they produced actually several batches, but a couple of them they couldn't release, so they only really? have yeah they only have, they weren't good, so they have two batches, so it's going to be a lot less than last year's Parker's release. And yeah, actually, you'll see like on the bottle there's there's actually two different releases, and that's a, people are already trying to trade one for one right now, so they can actually have yeah. both of them. They dumped more than that, but they couldn't use it all. Right. Yeah, there's been a divergence in the releases. Uh, I think it was the the wheat um, with the two different batches that there was a lot of discussion about variation from batch to batch. You know, but if it's anything, I was a big fan of the Promise of Hope. You know, which is arguably very similar. You know, to Henry McKenna uh, tenure, but the flip side of that is single barrel selection and you know the barrel selection for this upcoming release you know we can only hope that it's it's going to be you know some of the best you know i I think that not to go off tangent a little bit here but i think that the more we get the more um fans of bourbon the more people involved in the hobby the more people that express interest in it the more i think these companies are releasing products which is it's good and it's bad. It's bad for the long-term bourbon people in the terms of we've now got to fight. You know, we've got so much more competition. But, I mean, between now and November, how many releases are we going to – is this, would, is this like the most number of releases that we're going to have in a two-month period since, you know, bourbon has been a hobby for us? I, I just know I probably need to go ahead and just get another credit card because I'm going to yeah. max out one. Yeah. Just get a home I mean, equity loan and you're you're set for the fall. And <laughs> hey Nick, do you do you count the number of uh, different releases? No, I don't. I don't know a count off, offhand, but we do archive and they're available. It's something we could look at and pull the numbers from previous years. We archive all the release calendars and they're available right on the the current page actually by link. So some we could look at. But you know, to that point, and I think that was that I kind of piggybacking off that idea that I was thinking of earlier about, you know, bringing people into bourbon and it, it kind of the more the merrier. Yeah, you're right. It's going to be harder to get certain things. But if the, the, the consumers are there to buy and put their money towards these, these new and different things, then the producers and distillers are just going to be more likely they're going to have, you know, the opportunity to bring new and different and better stuff to market and try different things. So, guys, we are reaching the 32-minute mark right here. So, anybody have any closing remarks? Because uh, I'm just reading some of the the comments here. Uh, somebody said there's an Evan Williams 23 uh, that's going to be coming out as well. So, it's aged a year longer. Uh, somebody's just not happy with the way Heaven Hill is handling age statements and price tags lately because they're basically charging $100, $200 more than what we had regularly been accustomed to, right? Because most of their products were around the $30 mark. Now they're easily creeping up to 40, 50, 60, just for basic Elijah Craig. Looks like there's people already uh, lined up at Heaven Hill based on this person here. Yeah, it's a, that's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is actually your mobile unit right here. Isn't it? <laughs> I thought like, about taking Now we know where Ryan is. <laughs> a drop down screen that just looks like his office. <laughs> I, I, I contemplated taking this from the car ride, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite 2016 release so far? Anyone have thoughts on that? Uh, Old Forster Birthday Bourbon yeah. is really good this year. Okay, I haven't had it. OFBB is really tasty. Yeah, I was going to go with Foolproof just because it's 43 bucks, and I thought that was really good. I found some for 27 Really? Yeah. Wow, that's a good deal. You yeah. guys have it too easy there outside of Kentucky, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. We did. I saw a shelf with like six lined up, which was nice. But 
had a Heaven Hill select stock that, in fact, Jordan reviewed uh, on our website, but that that really surprised me. It was a hundred fifty dollar bottle, but um, was that the con- kind of, cognac finish? Yeah, my experience has been the higher price. I've been kind of disappointed with a lot of releases lately, and so I was expecting disappointment. In fact, it was a really unique tasting and and really good. Yeah, I, I agree with seventeen ninety two foolproof until I had Old Forester birthday, but that's a it's a good um and actually uh one i just had was the old forester um prohibition um that just yeah, came out it's 115 proof it's a really good pour for 36 bucks seems like as the proof go up on those they they get better yeah interestingly the price goes down as the proof goes up which um go figure yeah that's, that's enough they can just throw out whatever they want yeah, this. yeah, yeah. right <laughs> i'll look at nick to be able to do that math for us yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, let's wrap it up. So I want to say thank you again for that's a wrap for this community podcast. Uh, We had almost uh, we had 49, I think, at the highest amount of viewers. So we we damn near reached 50. Right. So uh, congrats, guys. This was very fun. Thank you for everybody that joined in and we're asking questions and being a part of this. This is uh, this has been a really fun experiment. And I I hope we can keep this going because uh, it gives everybody a chance to kind of be a part of this. And I hope uh, the listeners that are catching this on the podcast in their car right now will be wanting to tune in next time. Uh, so guys, just wrap it up one more time, tell you who you are and where they can learn more about you, your blog and all that good stuff. Carrie, um, at, on Twitter, follow bourbon underscore gamer and on Facebook, look for suburbia S U B O U R B I A and follow and like me there. I'll go next. Uh, bourboner.com. We'll have the antique collections and Pappy release maps again this year. So be on the lookout for that and feel free to send in your uh, leads whenever you find it in your state and we'll get it up. And breakingbourbon.com. You can find us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Breaking Bourbon. And you can visit the site for release calendar articles and reviews. Awesome. Hey, Hey, Blake. Yeah. Are you not bourbon R? Uh, you're you're bourbon R. The E is silent. Yeah. It's a yeah. silent. Well, okay. So here's the thing: it, it it's bourbon R, but bourbon with an E in there was taken, and it could also be mispronounced as bourboner dot <laughs> com. I had the opportunity to get that URL, and then I'm like, no, I'm just going to leave it with just the R. So the, that's I kind of to make up a story about what the R was. You know, my last name starts with an R, but I'm like, it was just Bourboner, and I just didn't want the E in there. <laughs> didn't want to be the Bourbon. <laughs> the, uh, the Web 2.0 uh, of Bourbon. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Bourboner, that's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so everybody follow them online follow us as well uh, at bourbon pursuit instagram facebook and twitter as well make sure you support the show on patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash bourbon pursuit we've got all kinds of good swag uh, we appreciate everybody that has been supporting us and what the hell next week <laughs> <laughs>